And now it's action time. Let's design a synchronous single port read-only memory. The ROM will have 16 by 8 bit words. At each clock, the address information will be processed and the data from that location will be shown at the output. The ROM will be loaded with data from rominit.hex, which is a separate file. This technique is also synthesizable in FPGA. ROM can be used to store the program memory for a CPU, for example. In order to read data from a separate file, we can use the readmemb or the readmemh functions. The first argument, it's a string and is the name of the source file. Next, we have the destination memory, which is a reg variable from our file. Next, we have the start and the stop address. The ports list for the ROM is very simple. We have a 4-bit address, a clock, and an 8-bit data out. For this project, you are going to need the following Verilog files. ROM.v, ROMINIT.hex, and TBROM.v. After you edit all files, you should have the same files as in the left picture. ROMINIT.hex has 16 hexadecimal values written in the Intel hex format. Let's analyze the Verilog code for the ROM. We first declare the module parameters at line 4 to 6. Besides the width and the depth, we also calculate the logarithm of the depth to know how to size the address read bus. At the module's instantiation, we only need to change width and depth, and depth log will update automatically. At line 7 to 9, we declare the ROM's I.O. ports. At line 13, we have a bidimensional array used to model the ROM. At line 17 to 19, we use $readmemh to read our hex values from ROM in it and place those values between 0 and depth minus 1. This means that each value will be loaded at the same index as the line number. At line 21, we have an always at procedure that will update data out with the value from the ROM address. The procedure is synchronous with POSIX clock. This code is synthesizable for Intel FPGAs and can be successfully simulated with ModelSim. The testbench code is very simple. The code should be interpreted from the left picture to the right picture. We first declare the testbench variables and next instantiate the module and connect them together. At line 51, we create a 1 MHz clock. The procedure from line 54 is used to read the complete ROM content. As you expect, we should see the same data that we have in our rominit.hex file. At line 64, we have a task used to read the data. We first sync on posage clock and we wait another clock for the output to be updated with the data from the current address. At line 70, we print the read data in the console. Isn't this easy? After you run the simulation, you should get these results in the wave and in the console. As a challenge, change the depth or the width of the ROM, update ROM in it hex, and then recompile and rerun the simulation. Congratulations! You now know how to model RAMs and ROMs using Verilog.